let me put it like this. These are sort of like um, things that you need to be aware of in complementary relationships, period. Some of you have heard me talk about some of these before. Some of them uh, you haven't. First thing I want to say is discipline. It is probably the most intentionally overlooked aspect of relationships because complementarity gives you discipline. Most of these are real short and sweet. Complementarity makes you sacrifice. You develop discipline through sacrifice. I don't know of any other way to develop uh, discipline except through sacrifice. If you are running, that means that you have to sacrifice some pain to be able to move faster. Okay? If you want to be a writer, then that means that you have to sacrifice some of the time that you might spend with other people or your fingers um, doing the writing or art, sacrifice the, the, your, 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 your um, joints. Because you know that one of these days you're going to have arthritis. The same thing with playing a piano. So in order for you to improve in whatever it is, in order for you to get better, in order for you to master something, you have to sacrifice. That's the whole thing behind um, giving offerings in church. That even though it's supposed to be a selfless act, it's really because you expect something back. For some people, giving that author means that this church will be bigger, which means that their chances of getting into heaven will be greater and all the rest of that. But the whole purpose of sacrifice, the whole purpose behind offerings, is so that you can get something back. And it's supposed to be greater than what you're giving in. Okay? So, in a relationship, the sacrifice that you give is supposed to not only improve the quality of your relationship, not only improve the quality of how you and her or him get along, but it's supposed to develop a better discipline in you so you can do things easier, if you will. It's supposed to turn you into a more refined, more focused person. It's supposed to mature you. It's supposed to make you into an older, wiser, more intelligent person. And it's, in the West, because of this extreme individualism, that had to be separated from that, like we had to be separated from so many other things. You can't attach phenomenal things to an institution that you're trying to destroy. Because people are going to still gravitate toward that institution. Um, the reason, main reason people are gravitating toward the institution now, I would argue in the West, is because of the zero negative population growth and the way it's being pushed. It's got nothing to do with your personal development or um, the fact that two can do things better than one. Um, and to remove the idea of self-discipline from this, that's very critical. And it matches, it's, it's, it's really grown parallel to, even though they're slowly but surely come converging, it's grown parallel to the spoilage of the children, generation after generation after generation. Because... When you spoil somebody, then they're not going to want to sacrifice. That's the last thing that a spoiled person wants. A spoiled person wants everything his or herself. I don't want to share anything with anybody. Okay? So the idea of being disciplined, uh, self-discipline, goes completely and totally against the grain of being spoiled. So marriage is... Uh, oh, it also does one other thing. One other thing that... Uh, marriage does in terms of discipline. For folks on the front line, and I have yet to meet somebody who is seriously on the front line who's not a worker, who's not a serious hard worker. Whatever, whatever their talent may be, whatever their energy level, and we come with different energy levels. But I have yet to meet someone who is not a serious worker. Okay, some, some are so far beyond the chart that it's not funny, but people who are serious workers. And what marriage does is that it matches you up with someone who you can work with in terms of that discipline. Let me, let me explain real quick. If um, in, in your life you're not going to be able to go 100% every day, all day long, 365 days a year, there are going to be times where they're going to be lapsed in your ability to put forth all your energy. If not, you'll probably be dead in a few years. Okay? So you, it, it has your, your, if, if you don't recognize it yourself, then your body will kick in and shut you down or slow you down um, to make you have some time to rest or to rethink what you're doing. Yeah, I would compliment that more than likely in terms of how fast people are moving, you're going to be doing like this. So you're going to see her putting out all this energy and it's going to galvanize, it's going to move you to put out more energy and then she will begin to come down a little bit as she's relaxing, relaxing and she'll see you. So in common relationships, usually when one person is working hard, the other person is working hard.
already beginning to work hard, and vice versa. Okay, so it also is sort of um, intra, inter uh, disciplining that support helps you to do what you need to do. Because if you, well, I guess also, I mean, you look at this other person and they're, they're working, you know, their their fingers to the bone, and you sitting there chilling, you you, you sort of feel like. <laughs> you need to be working. You need to get on it. Um, Panic-stricken, desperate seekers make mistakes. People who are, are so determined to find all these suicides on Valentine's Day, New Year's Day, all these suicides because nobody loved me. I couldn't find anybody to love me. It, it, because we have... We are looking for relationships based upon this, this thing that only lasts for a second as is defined by the European mind. I can't marry somebody unless I'm you know, in love with them. You find a utility. You find a person who fits what you don't have, what you're not good at. Our ancestors tell us love come, comes in time. That doesn't mean that you don't like the person. I mean, obviously, you should kind of like like the person. You should, you should be like, appreciate what they look like. But this falling in love thing, and, you know, I can't marry him. I can't marry her because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in love with him. That's, you know, kind of like technically, that's your problem. Because you're not about the right thing. You didn't come into this looking for commitment. You came into this looking for some ephemeral, short-lived, you know, fantasy thing, which does not exist except in the African, I mean, except in the European mind, apologize to ancestors, except within the European mind. So those people who are desperate, if you're desperately seeking somebody, then you're going to find the wrong thing. Those people who are looking for something and they find it quickly, most of them in African proverbs speak to quickly gotten, quickly lost. So if you're desperate, then that's exactly what you're going to run into. You're going to probably run into somebody who can see you coming, can smell you a mile away. It's interesting when you are not really looking, looking. Most of the, the, the folks who I've talked to who have been married for a while, when you're not, the person comes along when you're not even looking. You're just doing your work, which is another point here. Do your work, find your compliment. Do your work, find your compliment. Because if you're doing your work, another person only going to be able to find you because they're doing a similar type of work. And both that means that both of your minds are on the same plane, looking at the same thing in the same way, trying to solve the same problem, which brings up another point, which is your politics have to be the same. People would ask any of y'all and I years ago, well, what, how, how did you all stay together for Like this is a long time, but in the West, yes it is. How did you guys stay together for some? Because when we came together, the umbrella was black folk. This was the priority. Black folk. Okay? So these, all of the arguments and disagreements and all of the, the issues, money and all the rest of that, that was irrelevant because this was a priority. When you have something larger than you, then it'll hold you together through all of the issues and problems that you are going to have. You meet somebody, a couple that's been married for 30, 40 years, and say, oh, we never had an argument, then you need to run. <laughs> Put earplugs in and run. Because something is horribly wrong. They must have lived in two different houses in two different states. <laughs> and their relationship was based on a you know, 10-minute call every evening. That would be it. <laughs> so you're going to have these difficulties. Those politics, which is larger than you are, your, your relationship is supposed to be based on a larger vision, which we're going to talk about, a larger vision, a larger mission, a larger interpretation of reality than just what's going on in your home. And something larger will hold you together. You watch the movies which Europeans repeatedly show to try to get us on their side where some alien comes and attacks the country. All of a sudden we all run and, and hold each other's hand and shooting each other, shooting them for each other and got each other back and race becomes irrelevant in these movies. Because you have this larger force trying to attack. Same thing works in the opposite direction. When you have this larger vision, African sovereignty, and that's something that you both are mentally, psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually in line with, then that will hold you through, through the stuff. Okay. Well, 
a, there was a study done a number of decades ago that looked, looked at um, people who lived together before marriage and who didn't live together before marriage. And they expect the people who lived together before marriage to um, have longer relationships, have longer marriages because they were trying to push that. There's always an agenda in research. What they found was that the people who didn't live together before marriage had longer relationships. That was like 30 years ago. Things are a little bit different now. People understand, well, I say on the front line, people understand things a little bit different, even though we don't advocate that. Um, they found that the people who um, stayed together, who lived together before marriage, had higher divorce rates because of the expectation. I've lived with this person for three, four, five months or two or three years. I know what they're like. And then as soon as marriage occurs, something changes. This wasn't supposed to happen versus you never lived with this person and then the change occurs and it's not so drastic, it's not so dramatic. Okay? But people, the point of that was that people change. But they only change back into who they are. We put on this front, we put on, you know, nice clothes. What is that? Um, impression management is called in sociology where, you know, I saw Eddie on, I got the crumbs off my face, ran to my room, shaved, ironed the shirt, you know, put on a little deodorant, you know, <laughs> brush my teeth real quick. Because okay. I wanted her to see me in a particular way. You don't walk up to somebody and say, how you doing? My name is Joe. I'm stupid. Uh, I'm probably the ugliest person at the school. I have no talent whatsoever. You know, no. You want to present your best side, right? Okay. So when you're talking about something as serious as a compliment, then it gets even more important. But at some point in time, it gets kind of hard. Those those stilts that are holding up that image, the, the, the frame that's holding up begins to. There's a lot of weight up there, and it starts to come down and crack. And the other person's like. Who are you? We you know, need to redefine romance. Okay. Or maybe we need to define it outside of a capitalist reality. Because they have twisted the idea of what is romantic is somebody sacrificing for you. To somebody giving you something. Uh, we're working on that. That okay. sheet of paper on the board right there, we've got three three terms that we're going to investigate to find a better word for that. We know that came from Rome and all the rest of that. But for now, and I'm, glad, sure, I'm, sure, I'm, sure. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't want people who are watching to say, oh, well, who do you say wrong man? What's wrong with him? No, that's, that, we're only using that term because sure. that's what we have right now. The next complementarity course that we do, we're going to have the correct term. Um, Romance is supposed to be what you do for that person that you didn't have to do for that person, and it helps them. What's romantic is if he's a dishwasher, then you get up and wash the dishes before he has a chance to do them for no reason. That's romantic. You take her car and you know out in the, you know when she's sleeping and wash and wax it. You know she's been complaining about how dirty it is for like the last five or six months. People writing all over it. You know. <laughs> you're doing things that did not have to be done and they benefit that person really only they don't benefit you in any way shape or fashion in fact you're sore for like two days because that car was dirty okay <laughs> but it's like doing things for the other person that you didn't have to you see her looking at this particular coffee table book for years, and you can't afford that Tom Feelings pictorial of the Middle Passage. And you save up your quarters that you could have been spending on your lattes or what have you. And then you go buy that book for her. That's a sacrifice. Versus you take your credit card, which really means nothing to you, and, and go in and buy it. It's different. To me, that's romance. That's, that's romance. Okay? You want, want to give her flowers? Go out in the field. Go out in the meadow, find you some flowers. What's the difference between a weed and a flower anyway? I mean, a blooming weed and a flower anyway. <laughs> some of the weeds smell better than the flowers do. Okay? Every year, no personal brag, but every year there are these yellow crocuses, I think there are, that, that bloom in the front of our yard. 
like six or seven of them every year, they get picked for any out. And she thinks it's, you know. <laughs> but it's, to me, it's the thought, it's the idea, okay, that you're doing something that they couldn't do for themselves. You know. And, and to me, part of what they put and then they mix it with commercialism could ideally be, okay, she comes home from work and there's a tub full of very warm water with suds made from dishwashing liquid in the, <laughs> in the bathtub. A couple of candles that are maybe two or three years old, but they're burning and it's, it's nice in there and it's beautiful. And you close your eyes, follow me, put her in the bathroom, close the door. That's, how much did that cost? Nothing, but that's romantic to me. 